let's finish the last few questions of the prep. So let me just get to where we were, where we stopped last night. Um, we stopped at uh, the area question. So the next one that we are going to look at is is volume. Um, And then what I am going to take from a previous question, just since we are using, um, just going to take that component. I know we, we're going to work here with meters, but just that we get some some idea of what we're going to going to work with. OK, so. In this equation or in this um, diagram, they, they give us and they tell us if a square fish pond as a solid fixed circular pillar or island in its center, um, they tell us the measurements of a pond are indicated as above. Um, so since it is square, this will also be before um, the circular island has a diameter of a meter. Um, determine the volume of water that will fill the pond. OK, so basically work out the full area or full volume of the square um, and then we will subtract the, the circular component. Um, so let's let's do that volume of the square is basically length times breadth times height. Um, and then we will subtract that one. So Volume of uh, quickly again. I know I shared it with you guys in a previous presentation, but let me quickly check what is volume of cylinder. So volume of cylinder is. Um, uh, yeah, and that should have been logical. It's the the area times the height of the cylinder. Okay, so let's quickly four times four times two will give us the volume of that, and then it is. 22 divided by 7. The radius is 0.5. And the height is also to like with the square. So that will be 4 times 4 times 2 is 52. Twenty two divided by seven is three point one four. Times point five to a power of two times two. Okay, sure, I get to weird. Weird number.
20.429 to the power of 3. And then, as we did in this example, when we need to put it over into um, liters, because we need to go to the nearest liter. Uh, um, this time around, we will multiply, um, and we will multiply by a thousand, so that we get twenty four to nine liters. Okay, so also important, and I think this is nearly seen it now with with all the questions around the volume is that they want you to um, to put it back into into a method that that you're looking at at liters or one of the other measurements um, so just the important one to to remember to how to to put it back into that okay so Basically, we looked at the, the full volume, um, subtracted the, the cylinder component, and then also we needed to make sure that um, we convert it to, to liters. Okay, so that is question 18, question 18 done. Um, so you will get in your in your exam, one on um, the circumference, one on area, and one to do with volume. Okay, so let's let's look at the next one. A plumber charges a call-out fee of 350. And I think this also was in the previous paper. Um, so 350 plus a certain amount per hour to do a job. Suppose he performs a certain job in four and a half hours and the space he needs cost 450. The total bill is 1925. How much does he charge per hour for labor? Okay, so Call out is one, or the total cost is 1925. Call out is 350. The spares cost 450. So if we subtract those two first, 1925 minus 350 minus 450. We sit with a cost of 1125. Okay, but that is not what what they're asking. They ask us what will it charge per hour for labor. Um, we know he worked four and a half hours. So we need to divide that by four and a half. Which will give us 250. Which is option four. So he will charge 400 and, uh, 250 rand per hour. That was the 1125. With his call out with the extra space that he needed to buy. Okay, just again careful when we get to the 1125, it is listed as an option, um, but not needed in, in this instant because we want to work out how much it charge per hour. Okay, so again, just be careful of that other option that might be in in your exam as well when you work out something like this. Okay, question 20. 
So now we're going into a bit of um, interest rates and those kind of things. So let's see what what they ask. A father decides to start a savings plan for his baby daughter's future education. He deposits 300 rand per week into a savings account for a period of 16 years. The interest rate remains fixed at 10% per annum, compounded weekly. How much money will he have accumulated at the end of 16 years? Okay, so you can, um, we can, let's see, we need to get to a future value. Um, so, we need to get to a future value that is, that is, what we're looking for. We've got the PMT that will be deposited. Um, that is the 300 rand. Then they tell us it's 10% interest per year, so the interest the interest rate is 10%. It happens every week. So every week there's a payment that's being made. made. So there's actually 52 payments. So you need to change um, on the HP, it is, it is payments per year. So that I need to change to 52. Um, and it is been for 16 years. So when you work, or let's make it N, so it's equal to 16. So when you work that out, it's actually 852 payments or weekly payments that, that the dad will make. And then if we press future value, we will get our answer, which is 615,486.76. Okay, so option two and quite a lot of money. Um, if we did not um, change it to, so if we had The normal payments, uh, we did it 12 times a year. Um, you actually would have had option one as your answer. So if you did not change it to 52, but kept it as 12, um, your answer would have actually been option one. Um, so again, just, just be careful and make sure that you're using the right the right formulas and adding the right things so um, in this instance very important where they said to us um, they do a payment per week and also they said to us it is compounded weekly okay so that is really the important part in this this question was that um, because unfortunately, if you said um, or kept it as 12 times like um, the default is, we, we would have had, had option one. Okay. okay, so this is to look at when, when you do a recurring nearly payment into a savings plan was compounded um, compound interest. So somewhere we will need to get a simple interest question. Um, let me just. Okay, 
we enter it. Don't know why I can't. Let me just quickly take the presentation elsewhere. I will be back with it. <laughs> now, now why my computer is giving a bit of issues. Okay, so let's see. Question 21. Um, so question 21. Okay, so refer to the father's savings plan for his daughter's education in question 20. At the end of a 16 period, the father leaves the money in the account for further year and does not make extra deposits. Um, in this final year, how much money will he have accumulated in total by the end of a 17th year? OK, so we have calculated. I just want to see if a 615 is very really no. So. So hopefully something like this is not in your paper so that you don't need to need to rely on your previous answer. Okay, so we had that as our future value. So now we're adding one extra year. Okay, so it will be interesting now if we still, so how I would have done it is to say, okay, we don't need to know the new future value. This is the present value. So I'm going to just first use the a formula to to work with that. Um, which is one plus the interest rate. Not to remember divided by 52. But to the power of. 52 because of the 52 weeks, so I'm hoping that they did, don't tell us here that we now move to a monthly or um, so I, I'm just hoping that is correct um, and that they didn't now want us to move to a, a monthly or a different payment period. Um, which they should have should have told us. Um, so I get if I say it for six one five um, or at six point seven six and I multiply it with that, I get six eight oh one five two point seven five, which is option three. So this part just want to quickly add what I got there so that when you guys go through it, you can also. Uh, so that part was. 1051. OK, so made the assumption that we are continuing um, with a weekly payment. Or weekly interest, sorry, not weekly payment. Weekly interest, the interest rate is 0 0.1 um, and then we work with that future value that we actually now use as a present value and then a year later it will be 680152.75.
if you looked at this, so a year later it should be more than 615. So it can't be option two or three. So at least if you had this one correct and you start working with question 21, you could already eliminate option three and four um, because that can't be options because your new value will be more than 615,000 and not less. Okay. So there's about four questions left. So let's look at question 22. Um, I'm still looking for the ones that is to do with simple interest, but maybe we end off with that. So Peter borrows 500,000 from a bank and you will repay the loan by means of monthly payments of 8,000 each. So we nearly know what, to, what was the present value. We know what the PMT is. Then starting at the end of the first month, interest is fixed at 18%. So we know what our interest rate is. First question looks very familiar. Compounded monthly, determine how many full payments of 8,000 will be made by the time the loan is paid off. Okay, so we need to just change our payments per year to 12 again. Remember, it's now sitting at 52. And then we're looking for N. OK, so. And if you want to, you can add future value of zero because it should be paid off by that time. So 500,000 negative present value 8,000 PMT, 18% interest per year, 12 times a year. And if I press in, I get 186.22. If they're asking us, determine how many full payments will be made. Um, so, uh, full payments is 186 which is option one okay it really does feel like I have to check if we did not do it somewhere else as well in this prep last couple of otherwise it was actually in a different in one of the other subjects, so okay, it seems like it was actually in one of the other subjects. Okay. Okay. So let's let's look at the last last three. Um, again, looking at previous question. Sure. Okay. Referred to this. Determine what the final lesser payment will be. OK, so we now know. That it is 0.22 of a month. So I would have just said. I would have just said that 0 0.22 times 8,000. That would have been 1776.80. So that is what 
I would have done. Um, I just want to quickly check something else as well. So if we if we basically go back to this question and don't put in our future value, but we say present value is 500,000. Our payments per month is 8,000. Our interest rate is 18,000. If we say 12 times per year, and we have 186 periods, so we don't include the 0.22. If we then set maybe a future value, we will also get what is left. Okay, so another way to calculate is is to say, okay, we knew the the present value was minus five hundred thousand. We set your PMT was was 8,000. Um, we set your interest rate. Let's just make sure it was 18%. Your period per year was 12 periods per year. Um, N was 15.5 so that we get a total of 186. So we know then that 0.22 is actually left. So then if you press future value, you will also get 177. Okay, bit different um, because I didn't use for full. Um, I just use 0.22, um, but you will get it very close as well, 0 0.760. So very close to what we had there. So again, um, if we just said what is left times 8,000, we will get it spot on. If we use the calculator, we should be getting it a bit closer than what I got. But again, that one is the, the easier one to to use for this. OK, because you know, we will not get it 100 percent probably. So you need to guess. Um, there will not be one answer that says 1760 and one answer that will say say 1776 okay okay so that we still haven't looked at any simple interest which um which is quite interesting that we haven't looked at simple interest, but maybe the last one will be. OK, question 24. Determine how much interest will be earned if an amount of 20,000 is invested. So 20,000 invested for 30 months. At an annual rate of 11%, compounded every six months. Okay, so that is quite quite interesting. Um, so we need to look at the interest earned. So let's quickly get to interest will be 
be equal to shuk and I am going to go back to a previous. So just that we get this one that was interest earned as well. But that was simple interest. I just need to remember what the interest formula was, but else we can also look at it to say it quickly. Look at it from from this way that we. That we look at it from the interest, so. That formula and then. We have the P, so if we get the S, we can subtract the two, so let me quickly. Do it that way around. Okay, so we know that 20,000 is invested. They tell us it is invested at 11%. Compounded every six months, so every six months is twice a year. Um, and then invest it for a period of 50 months. So 50 months, if we look at how many periods of six that is, um, it's basically five periods of six. Okay, so let's just quickly, not 100% sure if that must be five or if it must be five times two so let's quickly just firstly check this formula so 11 percent divided by two because it's every six months so it is 0 0.055 plus one, see to the power of five, times 20. Okay, so when we work this out, we get 26139.20. So that is your your future value. Um, they want us to work out what is the interest earned. Um, so just be careful. So for that is there is a value or an answer, but that is not what we're looking for. We're looking for the interest earned. So we must subtract the 20,000 because that's with what we started. So what we will end up with is 6,159 rand and 20 cents, which is option four. Okay, so just be very careful um, because it's so easy that we've got everything to work out the, the future value, um, but what is important, they are looking for for the interest earned. So we need to then subtract that that component of, of what we started off with to get the interest earned. Okay, so again a bit different from from previous questions that you might have had. Um, yeah, we only wanted to get to the interest earned, but the easiest way to get to it is to look at you have gotten your 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 principal or your beginning value. You work out what your future value will be. If you subtract the two, you will get the interest component. Okay. 
Okay, so let's let's look at the last question. Um, again, I will share the recording, um, and then I will share also the present the full presentation, and I will also share the previous um, or a link to all the previous recordings on our on our WhatsApp group. Um, and again, anybody that might be listening to this, you can send me a WhatsApp on 0837908387 um, and I will, will add you to the WhatsApp group. OK, last question for for tonight. And before I take some some other questions that you guys might have. Um, So still nothing in this paper that was to do with um, simple interest. So you will get simple interest question in your in your paper. OK, so dentist needs 400,000 to buy a new surgical chair for his practice. He will pay a, a 50,000 deposit and then secure a loan for the outstanding amount. OK, so already when you, when you get that information, the loan that he is going to secure is for 400,000 minus 50,000. So the loan is going to work around the 350,000. OK, the loan has to pay it off in five years time in monthly payments at a fixed interest of 18% per year compounded monthly. Determine the outstanding amount on the loan at the end of the third year. Give the answer to the nearest rand. OK, so that now is the first time I've also seen some of the amortization in here. Um, so you working with, with 350,000. Um, so what I will do is okay, determine the outstanding amount on the loan at the end of year three. So what I will do is to say, okay, but let's, so present value. Is this minus 350,000. Um, we know you're doing payments at 12% um, or sorry, 18%. We know it is, sorry, that's interest, not payments. It is monthly, so there is 12, 12 payments per month. And then let's see after three years what is our future value. So let's see if that that will actually do anything. Um, and also, I just need to make sure that okay so i get that my future value of the three years is two one nine 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 one um so determine the outstanding amount at the end so if let's just quickly see if this does make sense or not. And can it be? And did I make a mistake somewhere? Um, 350,000. Fixed interest at eighty percent. Let 
okay so no this is not gonna work so i can't take a shortcut i need to use for amortization i thought i could take a, a nice shortcut with this um i just quickly want to check if we can do another shortcut otherwise we need to follow the route of amortization for you guys Okay, what is the shortcut that any of you can see for this? Otherwise, we need to. So there's the WhatsApp number. Um, otherwise, I am going to. And you guys, are you allowed to use? Excel in the exam. Um, are you writing with Iris or one of the other other invigilator um, apps? Okay, so it's the, so then I assume you guys are allowed to have PDFs open and those kind of things um, in your in your exam. Check the amortization. Also not here. Why is this not working tonight? Okay, so let's let's just follow the the normal way. So if if I had the three hundred and fifty. So let's just quickly do it the other way around. So what I would do is still with my present value. I wanted to do a shortcut, but let's, <laughs> unfortunately, there is no shortcut. Interest rate is 18%. Um, your payments per year is 12. So we're doing it for five years so that you will have a period of, of 16 periods. And what I want to get to is what will be the premium per month that that will need to be paid. Okay, so let's go back to what we actually need to get to first is what is the monthly premium um, after the five years future value will be equal to zero if you wanted wanted to bring that in so 350,000 negative is the present value future value is nothing 18% um, interest per year 12 times per year for five years um, that gives us 60 periods, and then if we work out what our PMT is, is triple eight 
seven and there goes my screen again seven point seven oh Um, so we can now look at this this PMT. Um, so determine the outstanding amount of a loan at the end of year three. So with your amortization function, um, and again, so on my HP, it is where the future value is. Um, so let's just check. I haven't used that in quite some time. So on the the shop, what what calculator are you guys using? Um, because on the shop, it was also supposed to be um, close to where the future value is on, on the HP, it is with a future value, you have your second function and you have your amort. Um, so please just also check. What your number is so that you need to need to be able to use it. Um, I'm quickly what I will do is write up this for you guys how to get to it on um, afterwards. So I will share it with you guys on, on the chat. Um, so we've got our monthly payments. So it's easy to set up that first, first line of amortization table, um, but then we need to get to that end of the third year um, so that we can see what is the principle and to be honest I haven't done that really frequently on my HP so I just first now need to go and and Google how to do that um, and then I will write it up for you guys how to do it. Um, it's interesting. I want to check. We're supposed to be able to do it in in Excel as well. It must be a, a amortization schedule. Um, so I will just check that for you guys as well. Um, to see if we can can get it at least in some form and just your calculator. Um, so that is just easier for you guys. Um, so I will quickly after this session just give you feedback on question 25. I haven't seen a amortization in any of your packs for last few years so that's why i'm now also wondering are you guys doing amortization still have we done this in the tamlin can you remember if we've done this in the in when we went through the the study guide Let me just quickly check your study guide.
since this is now way back previous paper, I just want to make 100% sure that we're not now doing. OK, so we did page 135. OK. So it is part, it's the last, last part of your study guide. OK, so I will, I will go and, and just quickly look at this. Um, what calculators are you guys using? Um, are you using HP or are you using the Sharp calculator? And you can just put that in the chat so that I can just um, get both ways for you to to do that. Quickly checking here in your in your study guide as well. Something different. Okay, so I will just after the session quickly write up something for you guys um, on on question twenty five that we can just get that amortization table sorted out. Okay. Other questions that you might have? Oh, we are chatting. Any other questions um, that you're worried about for the exam that, that you're not sure about? Um, anything else that or is that it? <laughs> At what time are you guys writing on on Saturday? And is it again like previously um, in 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 two groups that they split it out. saving the presentation so that I can share that with you guys. Um, I am stopping the recording so that I can share that. Um, 